Hi guys, welcome back to another build in the series, as they say. Well, 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 today, something a bit different than Second World War subjects, we are going back to the First World War, yes. In fact, this is my entry into uh, Ian Poulton's, or UK scale modellers, uh, World, well, Great War group build. It runs from the 28th of July to the... I think it's the 11th of November, so that's pretty fitting. Uh, so if you're thinking, you know, this is like really late in the series, yes, it's because today is actually the 6th of August. Obviously, as you know, I went away and obviously come back to certain things. So we're going to crack on with this. So the reason why I wanted to get this done is because it's obviously... Oops, excuse me, my voice went then to get this part out of the way because the the process of this first part will take a while to do. So I've just realised, I haven't realised, well, I've, I've realised I haven't realised, fitting, of what I haven't showed you what I'm building. So this is the kit I'm doing, okay, this is my entry. I'm not doing two of these, I'm doing just the one for now and this is probably my favourite First World War aircraft, the SE-5A. And the only one I built was a tiny 172 one, and that was God knows how many years ago. But I loved every second of it. And that was the old Revel one. There we are. Anyway, right, so the first thing we do, obviously I've just got the parts out of the bag. There's only two sprues to this kit. So yeah, the parts are very tiny, but very, very detailed. So across there, you got the wing struts. So this is mainly the wing section here. I like how Edward had done this. So that's mainly the wing section, all the different components. Whereas this is actually the main body and all the actual other detail systems you can actually make up with this kit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to start painting all the wood grains. That's going to take the longest to dry because I'm using oil paint. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit of oil paint. I've been using some burnt sienna. You're probably wondering why I put on a bit of paper because um, obviously I do some oil painting and oil paint obviously has, of course, oil. And so putting it on uh, a bit of tissue paper, whichever, drains out the oils so that it's faster drying pretty much and that's what I've done. So that's that. I've left it to the side so we can crack on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by painting all the parts in XF60, which is dark yellow. I did do this before, but I think I might change up and do a dark yellow, which is more fitting, really. Okay, so where did I put the instructions? There we are. So I'm actually surprised of how much detail goes into this small cockpit here. As you can tell, I didn't do a rebox re of this. Well, inbox review of this, sorry. As you tell, a lot of wood parts made up the cockpits during the First World War in most aircraft and very little metal was used apart from the engine, the guns and all the important components. So there we are. So pretty much we're going to be painting up in XF60 uh, dark yellow all the parts like the seats, the actual framing work going on here, all the panels that will go across the interior. Most of it was actually, here we are, so most of this was uh, wood colour inside, there's that aluminium top there, yep, so most of it was wood inside, but some of it is actually in the sail colour, which, what, well, sail colour, it is actually in, oh goodness me, it is actually in the wood colour, as well as the instrument panel. So that's what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go away, make a start on this, I'm going to paint up all the, the tiny little parts on the sprue and once that's dried I'll bring you back and we'll start the woodwork well obviously in the grain for the oils and that is really where we are guys so there we are okay so all the parts actually painted up in well the base colour we're actually going to start off with the oil paint uh, as you can see, a bit of oil around the outside where you can see it's the, the paper towel has drawn it all in. So pretty much I'm going to use an old brush to basically make this nice and grainy as you can see here. 
So you're only using a tiny, tiny little amount. So you just want to wipe off most of the excess. Uh, let's try on this bit here. And we're just going to make... Hmm. That worked too well, I have to admit. I think what we do is we're just going to paste it on and just make it grainy as hell. Uh, actually, is that working? Hmm. It's a bit more, I think. I think I need to use a bit of a stiffer brush, I think, in all fairness. Sorry, I'm just taking out a shot because I'm not sure how this is going to work. Okay. Right, so okay, so that's how it's turned out. Put a bit of a thicker lot on it, pretty much. So, yeah, I think I will need to go over with a harder, most like stippler brush, really. Yeah, but what it says in the tutorial on Wing That Wings page is that it should have been uh, put on with a sponge, I believe. So I'm not too sure of that. But uh, yeah, I think what I might do is I've got a titch of what, what, bit of white spirit here. I'm just going to thin everything down just a little bit. So we get some nice, too much there, some nice patterns across. So obviously, just want to thin a bit of grain down to allow it to show through. We don't want too much like I've just shown there. Right, let's try on this piece, see if it's better. I'll just show you how. A little bit, a bit too much there I just used. Okay. So that's just going through nicely, very thin with white spirit. Like so. So that's showing through much better than the other side, as you can probably tell. Hmm. Right. So you can get you get the deal. What's the plan is? Like that. Hmm. Right. Okay. So I'll see how it goes. Um, obviously, this will take a good while to dry off. So. I do apologise about the waiting time guys, but that's how it is and that I'll have to do. So with that, I'll just crack on I suppose. Two thousand years later. Okay, so yeah, I did actually do some painting up and then forgot all about this recording, so I do apologise about this guys. Um, the woodwork is actually done and it was actually, basically I put it on the, well, yesterday. I uh, left it dry overnight and I've applied a matte coat of Humbrol satin varnish over the top. And after the rest, it does look really, really nice. And it does that because if you put like a layer over the top, it does dry it. So that's that. So the uh, cop well, the cockpit, uh, you have obviously the pilot seat and the surrounding area. So the cushions have been painted in a red brown and then dry brushed uh, dark earth over the top to give it like a leather satisfaction. And then here, we are put in place a, I don't know what it is, some kind of thing. Then we have some flare holders at the side here. They're supposed, well, instead of supposed to be painted in brass, 
But I thought gold leaf actually made it look nice. I put a part in here that needs to be painted matte black, but I'll do that once that's dry in place. Okay, so now you need to put the seat in position. Do along here. Oh, notifications. Okay, so actually, I'll take that off. Go on, off your fingers, please. Thank you. Okay, so come on. Just a touch on the end is all you need if it wants to work. Oh, a bit too much. Just a bit on the ends here. Like that. <sighs> okay. Okay, so that's that on there. And that slots into there. Oh, it's actually pretty fiddly, this is. Okay, so that slots into there. That back there. Okay, so just let that rest for now. While that dry for a bit, sitting there in place. Right, right. What else is there to do? Okay, start putting some more things together. And of course, naturally, all these parts are very, very delicate. So do be careful in cutting these out. You know what? That's better. Sick death of notifications coming through. Right. Okay, let's just cut these bits off at the side. What? Are you supposed to cut them off? No, uh, I should think so. Yes, you do cut them off. There's actually some bit of over dramatic plastic oh in here. Sorry, I just take this out of cam sh camera shot because it's actually really 100% delicate these parts are to cut out. Okay, so let's have a look. Do you have to cut them bits off? Uh, nope. Okay. Right. So, oh, actually, hold on. Same piece off here. There we are. Sorted. Okay, that's better. Right. Oh, my, I've actually got a bit too much off on the end there. Okay, so a tank goes on the top of this. I'm not sure whether it's actually a petrol tank or not. But it's some kind of tank for either oil or... Some more of the two. Like right, so. And same again. Trim it down. The fact of the matter is, not a lot of this detail is sadly going to be seen, which is a real shame. But there we are, that's how it all works out. Okay, right, alright, that's that side. Like so. And come on, slot in. Like so. There we are, right, so that's the main two things done. The rest of the lot is kind of little tiny details. So let us dry up when it wants to. And then, right, so we can start by doing all the other little details. It's very fiddly, but detail copper, guys, so. Right, right, I'm going to go away, go some, well, go away and do some painting and come back to you guys. Okay, guys, here we are. So, well, let's come to this moment. Uh, as you can tell, I did go a bit ahead. Do apologise, just it's a lot of tiny, tiny little pieces to go here. As you can tell, I've actually done what Edward will. Oh, actually, two seconds while I just clear this bit. Oh, back on. I actually did what Edward stated to do. 
which was do the um, internal rigging across the actual um, two seconds, sorry, go on here. No, okay. Okay, dokie. I'll do that in a bit anyway. It's going to be a difficult task. Anyway, um, as I was saying, sorry, I did do all the actual internal rigging that Edouard suggested to do. I put the control yoke stick in there, and we got uh, some kind of trim pedal at the side here. Got the, oh, what's that called? The, it's not the throttle, it is the um, oh, choke in the middle there. And we got some kind of plate here, I don't know what that is for, but there we are. Anyway, there's uh, some other parts going down here. We've got the actual rudder pedals going there. I did actually put some... Uh, not string... Um, EZ line inside to make the actual wire to the foot pedal. There's a metal piece in here that goes for the grill plate. And I'm not sure what this piece is. It looks like some kind of flare holder. It's still drying. But once this seat is put in, we put in the magazine drum on the bottom here. And that's really it guys. So it's gonna be a challenge and a half. Squeeze this in somehow. Tell you what, I'm gonna take this piece off like that. Okay. This is gonna be a tight tight squeeze into here. Very tight squeeze indeed, actually. Wow. Okay, Edward. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to open this bits up here in order for this to fit in. Okay, guys, so that's the trick. Open the wings up for it to slide in. There we go. There's two notches it fits into here. And then. Come here. These two pieces fit on the end like so. Right, okay, so that's how it all goes together. Very fiddly indeed, I must admit. Okay, just a bit of touches in there. Comes across the wings. Oh. So I just knocked you off shot then probably. Okay, so at the minute we just need to press these this main piece down into there. And that's how it all fits in. Perfectly like so. It's obviously a bit fiddly from here and there. Hmm. So your trouble is you don't want to go breaking it either. And also not to put too much glue on the outside here, which I might have to trim off. Okie dokie. Okay. Okay, it's gonna take me quite a while to press into place, but that's how it goes in. Absolutely brilliant detail guys. Absolutely brilliant. Couldn't ask for more better detail on this. Okay then, that's that. Um, right, I'll continue with the next step and I'll catch you guys in a minute. Okay guys, here we are. Uh, let's bring it up to focus this. There we are. As you can see, everything is pretty much mostly done in the cockpit area. All the rigging and, well, struts and whatever and the control surfaces in there are all fine and done, as you can see. Okay, so just excuse me, I just need to refocus you two seconds. There we are. It's okay, one, if I had this on the ground here, you wouldn't have been able to see the detail because of it focusing. But with that, that's what it looks like. So anyway, uh, pretty much, uh, I've told the truth, guys. I've gone away, <laughs> I lost words then. Went away and did the instrument panel, which is here. Now, in the kit because this do remember this is a um, royal class kit it does give you the option of what to do with the instrument panel as most of the 
things do. It gives you the option of whether to put the decals on the original piece or place the uh, photo etch parts. Now the trouble was um, to put the photo etch parts on you had to sand off the detail of this um, instrument panel. Now I went to look and had a look online at some actual photos of the SE5A's cockpit as well as um, in-flight game uh, Rise of Flight. If you haven't heard that game go give it a like. Basically um, the inside was all raised pretty much. All the panels that you see here were raised so I left it like that. Um, now one thing it does not give you in the normal kits which um, I think it would do I think is you have to create this box here which the um, well, well, the drum magazines would fit in. Uh, so I've gone away and did that and I painted up in a dark earth. I couldn't get it the right colours. The, um, the instrument panel itself but um, that's how it's gone. Uh, the drum mag which will fit in later is a resin part so that's going to be really nicely detailed once that's done. But now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go away and put the instrument parts in. Now before we put the main part in there is a back piece which is just here. Now I'm not too sure why it's moulded on the clear bit. Uh, I think it was a kind of compass that was uh, fixed to the back here. I from the pictures I can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this piece off if I've just got my knife and blade, whichever one of the two. Just like that. Very nicely moulded. Don't know why the only thing I can think of why it was moulded in the clear parts was because of how it is. So that's that. Um Right, let's, let's get some glue flowing. I'm just going to put some, just taking our shot, sorry. I've just put some within this section here. That's what's telling me to do. First off, I'm just going to take this clear part, place that in there, if it does want to stay up, actually. like that and then the instrument panel oh 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 try not to knock this other piece fits in like that right okay is there a reason why that doesn't fit in or Sorry, I just have to take out a shot here, just try to fit it in as best I can. It's a very tight fit, this clear piece, to the actual um, instrument panel. And that's just fallen off. Great. Okay. Right, um, right give me a second, guys. I've just lost the um, hole on the back here. Actually... Put this in place while it's drying. Somewhere down in my feet, I can feel it. Don't you just love the carpet monster? Okay, that's your instrument panel in. There we go. So just get that dry. I'll find this back piece and then we can carry on with it. Okay, so I did manage to find it. Just hiding on the floor, pretty much. This is going to be a bit tricky. Okay, just take some glue out. So, so I might just take our focus or I really need to see this close up, guys, because this aircraft is just tiny, tiny as anything. Whew, try to keep my breath in here. Small some knocks could ruin everything. Okay, 
Right, that is in place. Wow. Blimey, talk about getting it precision right. Okay, so that is all complete, guys. That's the main cockpit done. Now, what's left is... Um, I'll just move that to the side without breaking it again. Now, what's left is... Here we are. So, obviously, we've put the uh, ammunition holder in place here. It's the car compass that fits in the end. Now, there's two... I just realised you're not in focus. Are you? No, you're not. Sorry. Turn it to the side here. Sorry. It would help if I do remember that. Okay, so there's these two parts here. These are the two resin pieces. You can either do a dual mag or a single mag. Um, hmm. I think I might do the drum mag because it looks really nice. I don't know why. I just like to. And it would be really nice and resin like that. And then once that's done then, this here uh, is placed in dark iron. This part is going to be for the actual uh, Vickers machine gun that fits onto the fuselage here. So that would be in place. And then by the looks of it guys, once that is all done, just got to work on the two fuselage sides, putting the last, no, the last of the pieces on and painting all this up. And then putting the parts together and making the fuselage together. But do remember guys, if you're making a certain variant, because sometimes the SC5A didn't have a cover or on a headrest in the back. Was it an armor plating? I'm not too sure. Anyway here, uh, the version I'm doing is C, so yes, I would have to cut that out. Just cut two holes and that's it then. But that's really it guys. Um, right, what I'm going to do is, I think I will obviously just let the can the cockpit dry. I'll put the uh, drum mags and the, um, the gun holder in place and then once that's done then I'll bring it back to the two fuselage holes there. Right guys, here we are. Um, obviously this is the process we've done so far with the SC5A. Um, I can't remember when was the last time I showed you guys but I kind of went away and I think I, well, I did off camera anyway, I went away and did some other de bits of detail. Uh, obviously the instrument panel went in there, we got some resin pieces to make the... Um, I don't know if you can hear in the background someone singing. Yeah, someone is singing away in the background from the other room because someone likes David Bowie too much, but there you are. Anyway, obviously that instrument, that is in. The cockpit is now pretty much done. Done and dusted, guys. All done and wrapped up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the um, two fuselage halves together. And quite stupidly, I've left the instructions in the box because obviously I've been away for over a week around modelling and symptom withdrawals kicked in. So I just had to get back here. Uh, right, let's have a look. Right, nothing. Oh, I'll see. Hold on. There's a good job I did see that. Actually, we do have some parts that need to be fitted in. Okay. Right, so we have some wooden pieces going in. If I can get out. Not totally prepared for this one, I wasn't. Just randomly just snuck on the ra under the radar to get some bits of modelling in. Because, you know, us modellers do get symptom withdrawals of modelling and it can be a bit of a pain. So, there we are. 43. Um, okay. I haven't part painted that part yet. Must have gone about it. It's just there for it. Zoomed off. Okay, so let's trim these up. Someone's still listening to Barry. The danger zone. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway, so that's do that's doing that. Let's trim these parts off, and soon we can have it all done and dusted. So I think we snug fit in. So of course, after this um, is the engine installation. Now, obviously, 
if you can remember in part one I mentioned I'm going to do the Wolseley Viper variant just because I don't know why I just obviously there's different versions of the SD5A built and with this kit you get a full engine obviously because that's how it is so with that let's trim these parts up and there we have it so obviously just put some glue in place here so right so we're going to do the first bit we're going to put this fuselage to here now the key thing is obviously you have to get in line with the other the other parts so put some stuff across there like that in the front section now it's quite it's kind of sandwiched all together if you understand what I mean so obviously the fuselage is sat underneath there now underneath we have this part here it does produce a bit of a lip I'm going to be honest but it's going to be a once that's all done that's going to be all sorted up like that so I need some glue underneath there just to get that in place Canvas kind of is kind of a complex kit to put together if I'm honest guys, it's not for a beginner, obviously if you're a beginner and you want to experience some first world war models then by all means go ahead but obviously do recommend that some experience is required, I'm just realised, just taking out a shot there. So once this is all in place, that should be all fine. Uh, like so. Press that in place. Okay, so right, we have some other parts going in. See where they go. That part fits in the front here. Oh, not like that. Need some probably need some thick glue on that because. Okay, uh, doo -doo -doo, that piece goes and then there, and then that piece. Oh, okay. Um, where does that piece fit? Through there, I guess. Through there. Right, so, here we go. Okay, that piece like that. So, this is kind of like a cradle, pretty much, of how the engine was fitted into the interior of the aircraft so the wooden crate was fitted around an aluminium slash wooden frame so that piece will fit into there like that there you can still hear someone singing in the background Right, okay, so that's the copper in. I just realised I haven't glued any of the interior frame to the inside. So I'll just put a, just a bit in some areas. Like so. Okay, so that's that side. Now we can actually put the other halves on. Obviously, there's another important thing I need to mention. Is that if you're making a variant with the or where the the armor I don't know if it's armor or a headrest fits in the back there then you have to cut out two holes on two parts of the fuselages in order for it to sit in place okay so that's going in like that no problem there actually hold on Okay, because it's kind of fiddly underneath. Not too worried about that. Ok, 
Okay, so it will need some clamps, I will admit, guys. Just going to need some clamps to be able to fit to. Oh. In order for it to fit round underneath there. So. Right, so. Just put some glue on top. It might seem boring, this might, but I'm just trying to help you guys. Yep, still Bowie in the background, so quite a fitting tribute. Okay, so some clamps in the back there, pegs, whichever you want to pull it. Okay, that's not going to work. Okay. Right, so it might be a bit too big for it to fit around the fuselage there. But at least it's got it in place. So that done. Now we just glue the inside of these parts. So, okay, so obviously we're going to need something bigger. Oh, God. Like so. Right, so it looks like we've got everything in place. There we are, guys. So I'm just going to obviously tighten the front bit up with the cowling there. I'm going to get some of this tape or some of this tape or some of the free mill tape I believe it is if I can get the ruddy thing out like so and we're going to pretty much just have, have it all loaded together I'm going to see where it takes us because this is a really nice project guys once this is being filled up we'll pretty much get all the hood on and oh actually hold on a second we have Mr. Peace Oh well, that won't take too much. It's a piece that goes around the front here. Oh well, that won't take too much. Right guys, see you in a bit.